Hey everybody, Foo Fighter 288 here, or Whiskey Boy 288 if you follow me on Twitch, or Eric Seidel if you follow me on Hub Pages. In the final installment of this uh, out of bounds adventure thing that I've been doing, I'm finally going to Mexico. And as you can see on the map, I'm just far west of Mexico. Haven't been there yet. Not sure how I'm going to get down there, but once I do, I'm going to explore the hell out of it. As you can see, I'm past that uh, river that you used to be able to swim across in order to get to it. But, I'm just going to ride along the side. I don't think I want to go down that way. I think I want to go around the edge of the uh, out of town region a little further. Alright, there's Mexico. Now, the trick is trying to find a way down there. I won't kill my horse. Try this. All right, that was painless. Okay, and now we're in Mexico. Although the game says we're still in Amberino, which is good, which means I probably won't get shot at by a ghost sniper. Call correctly, I think this is where the original road was in Red Dead Redemption 1. Around, uh, what was it, El Presidio? I think the name of it was. Let's see if we can find that. Never mind El Presidio. Where's that one uh, village? That one village where there was that gang hideout. Isn't that right over there by the river? Or at least it was in the first game. And El Presidio should be like here on this area right there. Yep. Because that's where the presidential palace was Easy at the top now. of the hill. And then there was a bunch of uh, houses around shops and everything along the side. They don't even have so much as a uh, tent or anything set up. Whoa. Which isn't a big deal. I mean, if Rockstar wanted to make a Mexico DLC, they could add all that stuff in, no problem. remember it was a town that was on levels like right here was where the presidential palace was and then this is the this is the road where John Marston held off all those soldiers in that one mission with the uh, Gatling gun this was the road that led up to it and then right here is where the church was and then right down there is where that little safe house was that you could buy and then all the shops and the stores and everything, and the little market. Well, the shops and the stores were on these levels. And then the market and everything was down below here. And then this was the main road that you could take to get out of town and yep. head into the rest of Mexico. Very much of a... I mean, you could tell there's somewhat of a road here, but they didn't pave it in like it was in the first game. 
might, there probably won't be a whole lot of revelations going on during this uh, during this video. But it is interesting to find all of the places that they did bring back and all the places that they haven't brought back. And just like New Austin in Red Dead Redemption 2, it seems kind of like a condensed version of the original map. Easy, whoa. There's that guy who was looking for a... Some lost fucking treasure and, spoiler alert, he never finds it. I remember when I first played that mission, I was like, man, I kind of feel bad for this guy. I could have gave a shit about the finding the treasure, as far as John, John Marston was concerned, but I just kind of felt bad about how sad that guy was that he spent decades looking for it and it turned out to be some dude's teeth or some stupid shit that was in that box. But then again, the moral of the story is to not go, you know, chasing after shit that doesn't exist. Because you're just going to be disappointed in the end. Don't go chasing fairy tales is pretty much what the moral of the story is. See, at the time when I first played Red Dead Redemption, I played a lot of the side missions and I kind of felt upset that I wasn't able to help the people because I remember doing that in GTA 4 and thinking, oh, hey, I'm helping all these strangers. But then in Red Dead Redemption, that was like, okay, yeah, there's strangers that you can help, but you're not, you know, it ain't going to be happy endings every single time. But once I got older, I realized, well, hell, these, these assholes brought it on themselves. It's not John's fault that he couldn't save all of them. Really, I guess the moral of that story is just not get yourself involved to begin with and you won't have any problems. Easy, easy. I'm all about leaving people to fuck alone, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, everything looks more condensed. I mean, this looks even more condensed than New Austin. Then. Of course, then again, this is an afterthought. That's probably why. Yep. Wait, I remember this spot. There should be a little ruined house up here. Wait. Well, okay. If it was there, it would be it would be right on that little outcropping. But there's like a little uh, there's like a little hacienda that's just like um, that had something in it. I can't remember what was in the first game that it had, but it was right there on that outcropping. I feel like a giant. Yep. It's like a, you know. Yeah, that's still there. That's that land, uh, that land bridge thing that has the treasure underneath of it. Well, not the treasure, but the one yeah. treasure map underneath of uh, that one treasure hunt in chapter, uh, well, not chapter two, in the Mexican section. Everything wasn't chapters in the first game, everybody, in case you never played it. It was, uh, it was more like a classic GTA game. You know, you started off in one section of the map, and then eventually Mexico got opened up, and then eventually West Elizabeth got opened up. Yeah, there's a girl. And when I say GTA, I mean like the original GTA. It's not GTA okay. 5, where they gave you everything all at once. All right, the town where you meet Landon Ricketts has to be around here somewhere. I mean, because if that... It, it was always near that land bridge thing over there, that outcropping of... Hell, but whatever the hell geologists call it, I don't fucking know. But that town is clearly not in Red Dead Redemption 2. Somebody said that somebody said that the buildings are in Red Dead Redemption 2, but that they're just not properly rendered, but I don't see shit. There are no buildings whatsoever. There's like zero buildings. I don't know if it's because I went around. I guess you have to cross the river doing the river crossing thing in order to pop them up, but that shouldn't be an issue. None of this stuff pops up on the map. I think right around here there was a graveyard. I 
right up here, there was like a giant graveyard. Or near here somewhere. No, wait a minute. No, maybe his ranch was in this area. No. No, I'm mistaken. You know, right around back there, where I was riding, that's where that one little settlement should be. You know, the one with the, um houses and the gambling and there's that one strange request where you help out that one hooker or at least try to help her out can't remember how that turned out and up there I'm pretty sure there was like a around here up, up up there is like a fort where you did a mission yeah. that might be a little further west east come across a church yet. I'm guessing that's not there either. I guess that would be a cathedral. Oh, no, no. Monastery. It's a monastery because there's like a whole... It's not just a church. It's a, it's a whole little fort looking thing. Yeah, that village. The one with the hookers. That should be right over there. I know that's not the best way to describe a location, but yeah, that's pretty much what it was. It was the location with the hookers. should be right over there on the left. Because this is the train tunnel. Right along here was where the train tracks are, and this is the train tunnel. Go to try and re-hijack the train that got stolen by the soldiers, by the rebels when you're yeah. doing that one mission. And the train tracks are all along here. They got. They still got the train tunnel right there, cut through. That fort that I was talking about, I think that's straight ahead at the top of one of those uh, Monument Valley looking type of uh, structures. Or then again, it might be at the top of that one over there. No, no, actually no, that's not it. No, no, it's past that. And right around here is where that one uh, little settlement was. Uh, the one uh, mission where you help Landon Ricketts rescue that one guy and you guys ride through that valley right there shooting soldiers. Oh, wait a minute. No, I think that settlement I'm... No, this... Yeah, the settlement I'm thinking of was right here. It was like a little town and it had that uh, that one Chinese guy where he had to steal a uh, Hungarian half-breed in order to get his quote-unquote freedom from that butcher. It had to have been right here. Yeah. And then down here, well, there was a there was a cave and shit over here. Is that the cave? Nah, that's not it. See, yeah, look at all this land right here. It's flat land. Yeah, this is where the town usually is. And that butcher shop was right over here. All right, so none of the buildings so far seem to be intact. They don't even have, like, shitty, poorly rendered versions of the buildings. But, before I completely give up on Mexico, let me ride to the far east end and see if they got that one fort that had the cannons. I'm not saying there's going to be cannons when I get there, but I want to see if they at least have the fort. Yeah, you reach for the moon, buddy. Good luck to you. Which is probably why we can't go to Mexico in this one, because they kind of threw, threw this all together, it seems like. Like this here, this I think this is the trail that you and Landon Ricketts shoot your way through when you're rescuing that guy from the cave. And right around here is where I think the... wait, 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 wait. Yeah, this is where the cave is, or at least this is where the cave would be. And then up that path there, you go down, you and Landon and that other guy go down this path. And yeah, this is where the butcher shop and the rest of the town is. So yeah, this is where that one town is. And then you 
come down here, you go into the cave, you shoot up the place, you rescue the guy, or I think you were rescuing at uh, Louisa. I think it was Louisa. I don't know. You're rescuing somebody, and then you and Landon run through this trench here. Yeah. Except there was more slopes on the side. It wasn't, I don't remember it being like this. Or maybe it was like this at first, and then you, yeah, then you come out here, and then they're on the sides, and you're shooting them, and they're on the slopes, and you're dead eyeing them. And a couple of guys chase after you, and you shoot them. And then you meet some guy with a wagon at the end of this uh, little valley here. So maybe you shoot your way through here, and then you meet a guy in the valley. Yeah. I don't know. I don't remember exactly, but I do. I do. That that does remind me of that mission, that spot right there, and it confirms that that town is not rendered in Red Dead Redemption 2. So that one place, that's the fort. It's got to be at the end of this road. Found a floating rock. Easy now. So if anything, people, even if we oh thanks for the lighting rock star. If anything, people, if we didn't find anything yeah. useful in Mexico, we at least found a floating rock. Then again, when I go to make these videos, and I'm not sure what's going to happen when I start doing them, I think the key to life is to keep expectations low so that you're not disappointed later on. If you go into places thinking you're going to find a giant dinosaur or some kind of zombie nest or sunken treasure or some shit like that, and then you end up coming across a floating rock, then yeah, you're going to be a little depressed about it. But like I said, the key to life is to keep your expectations low. Something that Geraldo Rivera could have done when he was trying to find Al Capone's uh, buried treasure in Chicago back in the 80s. Yeah, there was a chance that it could have been somewhere, but you know what? Realistically, there was no fucking way. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Yeah, here's where that hilltop fort is. Or at least it would be if it was in the game. It would be right here. I was in the wrong fucking spot. See that, see that slope there? With the long... Like the base is down there. And then you had to fight your long way up this hill. And then right around there was a cemetery. And then you use the rolling block rifle to shoot the rebels that had this fort held over. Yep. So that's where this fort is, right here. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the names of the when I go to edit this later, I'll put the names of the missions in the description so you'll know what the hell I'm talking about. I can't remember this stuff off the top of my head. Town names and, you know, missions and... I remember the missions, I just don't remember what names they are. Red Dead Redemption was like the first Rockstar game that started using like really intellectual, like, mission names for everything. Not that that's a bad thing, but... You know, it's better than calling a mission the horse or some other kind of yep. basic bitch title. Yep. Would this be where 
where the fort is? The one with the cannons? Is it? Is it? I uh, no, nah, it can't be here. I remember you. Yeah. You were able to see it from the um, from New Austin in the first game, so it's got to be up on that ridge. If I could find a way up there, I can. I can probably find. Well, judging by the way things are so far, I'm probably not going to come across that fort. But I can find where that fort would be located if it was in the game. I get the feeling like something's missing here. I mean, like, you know what I mean. Wait a minute, you know what? I bet you the fort was probably around here somewhere. Maybe I'm just losing my freaking mind. I can't. I can't remember exactly where it was. All I know is you could see it if you okay. used the binoculars from over there. In fact, I got a memory of that. The first time I ever played this game, on, well, not this game. The first time I ever played Red Dead Redemption on an HD TV. Not only was I able to see the grass that was in the ground, which was a big deal back then. But I was able to actually see a lot of the buildings from across the water at New Austin once I unlocked the binoculars. You couldn't see that on a standard TV for some reason. It's like if you tried to play it on an SD TV, it it just the game looked completely different. But then once you placed somehow once you plugged it into an HD TV, it just it, a bunch of stuff unlocked that you'd never see before. I bet you this game does the same. If I had like probably some kind of a 4K Elite $1500 HD TV, I'd probably be seeing all kinds of amazing shit. But from what I can tell right now, this game looks amazing even on a you know Samsung 1080p thing that I got now. Hey, and on that note, thanks for watching, everybody. Our adventure in Mexico appears to be over. Uh, if you liked the video, and be all honest with you, I didn't really like the video because I didn't exactly find what I was expecting to find, or from what I should say, what other people have seen when they went to Mexico. But anyway, uh, yeah, uh, please like, share, subscribe, comment. And uh, I think this concludes the whole uh, Out of Bounds uh, exploration thing that I'm doing. I'm going to move on from this and, God willing, make some other videos with this game. Because, uh, believe me when I tell you, trying to ride around 900 miles of barren wasteland just to get into places that Rockstar does not want us to be is a little taxing on my time and my sanity. So believe me when I tell you, I worked my ass off on these videos. And hell, I haven't even started editing them yet. Give me a gun and a bullet now, please and thank you. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Please like, share, subscribe, and have a wonderful night. Pray for me.